Hello and welcome to this Tease in News. My name is Neil and today the topic under discussion is election of a speaker and deputy speaker. This is how we'll proceed with the discussion. First, we'll discuss the news that how a certain individual has been elected as the deputy speaker in UP Legislative Assembly and then why certain issues have been raised related to that election. Then, we'll discuss some constitutional provisions and rules of procedures regarding the office of a speaker and deputy speaker. Then we'll discuss why the anti-defection law has figured in this conversation and what has been a brief history of anti-defection law. Then on the basis of the concerns that have been raised in the discussion that far, we'll discuss a few uh, ways to overcome those concerns and then you will have a question to practice your answer writing on. So let's move on. A certain individual in UP Legislative Assembly years back was selected on a ticket of a certain party. Now, in 2017, he switched from that party to another party. Later, two years later, that party from which this individual had switched filed a complaint under the anti-defection law. So that complaint was pending with the speaker who is the deciding authority on anti-defection law. Days before, in 2021, that is two years since that complaint had been filed, days before this present election, this speaker threw that complaint away and then this person was elected to the post of deputy speaker in UP's Vidhan Sabha or Legislative Assembly. So this is the news. Now, why this news has raised heckles? First, this post was lying vacant for such a long period. Now, this is a constitutional post. Constitution says that this post should be filled as soon as possible after the new assembly has been convened. But this post was lying vacant. So that is the first issue. Now, only five months are left in the tenure of the present Legislative Assembly of Uttar Pradesh. Why election has been done now when only five months are left? And also, this person was uh, under a scanner of anti-defection law, but a speaker decided days before that this law won't apply to uh, this particular individual. So there are certain questions over the moral as well as the legal uh, ramifications of this decision by the speaker. Now, let us know first what are the constitutional provisions related to the office of a speaker and deputy speaker. We need to know the articles that mention the election as well as the vacation, resignation and removal of the speaker and deputy speaker. So, article 93 of the constitution talks about the appointment of the speaker to the Lok Sabha and 178 talks about the appointment of the speaker and deputy speaker to the legislative assembly. This is the article regarding appointment. Also, article 94 and 179 respectively talk about vacation, resignation and removal of speaker and deputy speaker of Lok Sabha and legislative assembly. So, uh, let us know something about the office of speaker and deputy speaker. Uh, first, the time frame and the rules of election because this, this, these are the things which have been under scanner in relation to this news. So generally the Legislative uh, Assembly and the Lok Sabha elect their speaker and the uh, deputy speaker within the first two sessions. A speaker is generally selected during the first session, deputy speaker is selected during the second session. It is nowhere written in the constitution per se but this is how it is being done. This is a convention that is usually followed. Also in Lok Sabha, the election of the deputy speaker, as we just mentioned, is not mentioned in the constitution that how it is going to be done. It is governed by the rules of procedure and conduct of business in Lok Sabha. Similar provisions are there in the assembly rules and this is how it is done at the level of legislative assembly. Now, what is the tenure of the speaker and deputy speaker? This is also important. because Why? Because we think that maybe it would be coterminous with the term of the government, but this is not so. From the date of his her election till the first meeting of next Lok Sabha or Legislative Assembly. So this is how much their tenure is. This is an important fact to be remembered. Also, they are re-eligible. Uh, they are eligible for re-election. Also, whenever the Lok Sabha is dissolved or the Le Legislative Assembly is dissolved, the Speaker does not vacate his her office and continues till the newly elected Lok Sabha meets, also newly elected Vidhan Sabha meets till the first session. Now, what is the role of the speaker? A speaker is the sole representative and guardian of the powers and privileges of the members. 
so many times we have heard about the privilege motion being passed against certain members so the basic responsibility of guarding those privileges is upon the speaker also the speaker uh, is the principal spokesperson of that assembly or the house uh, in which he has been appointed as the speaker also he or she enjoys uh, enjoys the powers of a quasi judicial body in what context for example uh, let's say he or she has the power to decide that if a person is subject to anti defection law so this is how he or she is also uh, uh, this office is also a quasi judicial body uh, he or she also shares the responsibility of maintaining order and uh, decorum and is considered to be the final interpreter of the constitution and the rules of procedure within that house moving on further so what is what are the roles and responsibilities of the deputy speaker deputy speaker basically performs the duties of the speaker's office when that office is vacant also acts as a speaker when the uh, speaker is absent from the proceedings of the house and the deputy speaker has the same powers as the speaker when uh, he or she is presiding over a sitting in the house so generally he uh, his or her responsibilities are based on the presence or absence of the speaker from the house now we mentioned anti defection law because anti defection law complaint was pending again against the certain individual who has been selected as the deputy speaker in up's legislative assembly so let us know a brief history about uh, anti defection law 1985 was the year when parliament decided that there should be some anti defection law that can stop individuals who have been selected on their party tickets or as even as independents and then try to shift their party uh, after they have been elected and while the government formation is happening so to bring some stability uh, to the governments in 1985 10th schedule was added in 1985 to govern the anti defection laws as per the 1985 act at least one third members of a party should defect or should split to call it a legal a legal split otherwise anti defection law would apply on those individuals or at least the complaint would be sent to the speaker and then the anti defection law will will apply later on uh, via 91st amendment act in 2003 what it mandated that not one third at least two third people should uh, leave a party or should split from a party to qualify it to qualify for it as a legal merger, uh, merger valid in the eyes of law so this has been a brief history of anti defection law now important thing that the questions on the disqualification on the ground of dis, uh, defection is referred to the chairman or the speaker of such house this is very important that the speaker or the chairman of such house is the deciding authority uh, over the complaint of anti defection law complaint under anti defection law however in 1992 in kihoto holohan case supreme court decided that such decision by the speaker should be under judicial review so this is also a very important fact fact number 2 fact number 1 that the speaker or chairperson is the final uh, final authority to decide over such issues fact number 2 supreme court has power of judicial review over such decisions of a speaker or the chairman now there has been a specific exemption in the anti defection law given the sanctity of the post of uh, speaker and the deputy speaker or the uh, chairman or the vice chairman which unfortunately is not uh, followed but given the sanctity of their posts there has been a exemption that if they want after election to the post of a speaker or deputy speaker or chairman or deputy chairman they may resign from their uh, party's membership and anti defection law won't apply to them unless and until they decide to join back a different party or that same party while they continue to occupy that constitutional post so there has been a specific exemption in the 10th schedule, schedule for these uh, offices that is uh, rajya sabha deputy chairman and chairman deputy chairman of a state legislative council and a speaker and deputy speaker of a state legislative assembly so several concerns have been raised several concerns can be gauged from the discussion which we did, uh, did till now what are those one that why the convention which was to hold election as soon as assembly or the 
Sabha has been convened, the Lok Sabha or the Legislative Assembly has been con uh, convened. So why the convention to appoint a speaker or deputy speaker was not followed in a spirit? That was a concern. Also, why the anti-defection law was not followed in a spirit by the speaker and is he or she the right, right authority to decide on such matters given the fact that mostly and only mostly but mostly they belong to the same party which is in majority in the assembly or the Lok Sabha. So there have been some recommendations, some way forward suggested by election commission, supreme court, certain experts. What are those? Election commission has suggested that uh, it should be the deciding authority in defection cases. This is one thing. At least election commission is an independent body constitutionally. Now others have argued that the president and governors given their higher given the higher sanctity that has been given to their posts, they should hear defection uh, petitions. Supreme Court recently suggested that the parliament should set up an independent tribunal to hear such cases of under anti-defection law and it should be the deciding authority, that panel should be the deciding authority. Anyhow, these three things have been suggested regarding the anti-defection law. Now, the larger question that why the convention has been not followed only two things can be done. If the convention is not being followed consistently, it will cease to be a uh, uh, convention. So what should be done? In a healthy democracy, conventions should be followed. However, if they are not followed, they should be codified. They should be laid down in the rules of procedure or in the constitution itself. But in a better way, uh, suiting the strength of India's democracy, conventions regarding elections to constitutional posts should be respected. This is the way forward. This is the only way forward. Based on all this discussion, we have a question. In the light of controversies around the appointment to the post of a speaker and deputy speakers in several legislative assemblies, discuss the issue involved and suggest the ways forward. Think over this question. Practice your answer writing. We will see you in next episode.